Um, I will turn it over to Robert if he wants to say a few words, and then we'll get into some questions. Thank you. Bye, Robert. Yeah. Uh, first, I would like to thank God for this opportunity. Um, I'm a very, I'm very excited to be a, a king right now. Um, the emotions I'm feeling are hard to de hard to describe, but I'm pretty much ready to get out there and contribute in any way I can possible. Okay, we will start with Matt George, KHDK. Robert, appreciate you doing this. Nice to talk to you, at least. Uh, I don't know if you know, the Sacramento Kings fan base, they've been starving for some wing depth for a while. So there were a lot of celebrations, at least on social media, when you were um, when, when we found out that you were coming to Sacramento. How do you feel you fit in with this run and gun type style that the Sacramento Kings uh, are, are trying to implement? And, and do you feel like you are that right fit as that three and D prototypical wing? I feel like I fit in perfectly, you know, having De'Aaron Fox at the point guard. He's a very, uh, he's a great point guard. He's able to create for his teammates. And I feel like the pace of the game is perfect, nice and up and down, be able to make plays on defense as well as plays on offense. So I think I fit in perfectly because I don't necessarily need the ball in my hands at all times. Uh, I'm willing to run the floor, get back on defense, whatever needs to be done, as well as knock down shots. So a uh, whole lot of penetrating and kick, uh, kicking going on. So, I'll be open and I'll be there to knock the shots down. I feel like I fit well. Okay, James Ham. Hey, Robert, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Hey, I uh, six seven two thirty. You played predominantly at the shooting guard uh, in college, but can you play the three and the four at the NBA level? Yes, yes, I think I can. Uh, especially considering uh, now uh, the four men's are. More, four men are pretty much on the perimeter uh, a lot of the times. They're spotting up in corners and they're shooting threes from the wing. So uh, I'll definitely be able to space the floor, and I don't think I'll have a problem guarding the four men on defense. So I do feel comfortable doing that. What is it that you've been working on during the sort of this pandemic lockdown to, to really improve yourself and get ready for the next level? I've been working on my lateral quickness um, and my agility. Uh, but especially my ball handling. That's something that uh, I've heard is a big question mark about my game. So I wanted to be prepared and be ready to show people that, hey, I'm comfortable with having the ball in my hands and being able to make plays. Uh, I've also been working on my free throws because my percentages weren't where I wanted them to be. So those are the main things I've been working on. Antonio Harvey. Yeah, Rob. Um, actually, this is a geographical question for the SIP. You come from a state that um, has a few NBA players, uh, Ben Baker, Monte Ellis, Rodney Hood, who is still in the league. Um, I know Jerry Rice, I believe he's from your, <laughs> your neck of the woods. Um, I would just say him as far as football, him playing for uh, San Francisco, which is about an hour and 15 minutes from uh, Sacramento. What is it like playing in the SIP? You know, what's that athletic experience, man? It's different, you know. Um... I honestly feel like a lot of people from Mississippi go unnoticed because it's a lot of guys that are that are just in small towns that are very talented and athletic. You know, uh, they're built pretty different. They're strong guys, athletic guys. So playing here in the SIP has definitely has been a challenge, uh, especially when I was in school. So I enjoyed it, the level of competition and play. It seemed like, you know, you're one of those players, as is uh, Rodney, who kind of like changed that whole perception of a you know, these players from a uh, Blackfoot country, huh? Yes, sir. Most definitely. You know, uh, it, they're overlooked a lot of the time. So I feel like Rodney Hood kind of started things off with uh, getting people recognized, especially with this AAU program that I pretty much played in. So uh, being able to come up in this program and then basically doing the same thing that he did feels good, especially coming from Mississippi. Jason Jones. Hey, Robert, how you doing? Doing pretty good. How about you? Doing all right. Uh, looking at you uh, from your freshman to sophomore year, what changes do you did you implement or did you work on to go from where you were as a freshman to to, to your sophomore year and become a, a high level NBA prospect? It was just my mindset about the the game and then the grind and the work that I put in, honestly. I knew my role would change um, from my freshman and sophomore year. So it was just about self-improvement, um, improving all over in every aspect and every area as far as defense, offense, um, 
shooting, whatever it might be. Uh, that was pretty much my mindset to make that big jump. And people have talked about how physically you're ready for the league or they feel like you can come in and help a team just physically already. But when you, you mentioned earlier that you don't necessarily have to have the ball in your hands to contribute and you can do anything to help. When a lot of guys don't come from college with that mindset already, just how did you develop that? Was there a coach or someone in particular who instilled that in you early? Well, I got humbled real quick when I got to college. Um, guarding Quindary Weatherspoon and having those vets on the team, uh, I realized, like, hey, you're going to have to be a role player. You're going to have to put your pride aside for the team and just do what you have to do to help the team. So that's why I have this mindset now because I know coming into the NBA, it's not like I'm going to be putting up 20 shots a game. So I'll definitely put myself aside for the betterment of the team. So that's pretty much how I got that mindset, just having to go through it in college. Sean Cunningham. Hey, Robert. Um, just – your draft experience last night, being with family, and then ultimately, you know, have, going through a trade. At what point did you know you were a king, and just what was the whole experience like? Um, I knew right before they announced it. Uh, my agent Kieran called me. He was like, "Hey, you're going to be a, a Sacramento King. Congratulations!" And and then I told my family, and then right after that, they pretty much made the announcement. Uh, just leading up to it, you know, everybody has that has those butterflies in their stomach the whole way through. So. Um, just hearing that announcement and hearing I'm going to Sacramento, excited, man. I'm, I'm very excited to be out there. And just along the lines of Jason's previous question about um, being in college this past season, was it, did it feel fulfilling? I mean, I know things kind of obviously stopped prematurely, but were you pretty satisfied with what you were able to accomplish there this season? Uh, for the most part, yes. Um, I felt like going into the SEC tournament and NCAA tournament, uh, there was a lot more to prove um, within myself because I noticed there were still questions about my game. So I felt like that was the perfect time to do it and just make some runs and show him that, hey, he's the ultimate competitor. He's the ult He has the, has the package to be in the NBA and things like that. So I wouldn't say things uh, ended the way I wanted them to, but uh, at the same time, I look at it as a blessing, as a blessing in disguise. Michelle Dapper. Hi, Robert. Congrats. Welcome to Thank Sacramento. You. Thank tell you. Us a, tell, tell us a little bit about your game. We've seen it, of course, on some film that we've seen. But if you're a Sacramento fan and you haven't watched any SEC basketball, what would they, what would they see if they watched you play? Well, coming in, I'll be that 3 and D guy, uh, somebody who's trying to guard the best player on the opposing team um, just to take on that challenge and try to stop them in any way possible. And then on the offensive end, just being active without the ball in my hand or, or with the ball in my hand, uh, being a sharpshooter, knocking down shots, and just being that energizer bunny on both ends of the floor um, just to keep the team going and doing whatever has to be done to win. Thank you. Welcome to Sacramento. Thank you. Um, go back to Matt George. Robert, uh how are you dealing with the anticipation now? You had to be patient for so long building up to the draft itself, and now we are accelerated to training camp starting in just a couple of weeks and the season just over a month away. How are you doing with the anticipation for that? It's all good, honestly. Um, uh, patience is the key at this point. Uh, I've had to wait for about seven or eight months now, so um, I feel like I'm ready. I prepared myself, so um, – Am I nervous about anything going into it? No, I'm not. But uh, I am ready to get to Sacramento and get things going, play some organized basketball. Uh, James Ham. Yeah, Robert, we're hearing that you're a bit of a renaissance man. You can play multiple instruments. What, what do you play? What's sort of your focus? Uh, I play the bass guitar. That's the main in instrument. And then I can also play the lead guitar as well. Are you good? Can you play something Pretty for us? You got a guitar sitting there? I don't have it sitting with me right now. It's, it's in the back in my room, but I can play the bass guitar like very well. Like I can pl pick up on songs. Like if I just hear it, I can play songs like that. But the lead guitar, I'm still learning. So uh, I'm pretty decent on that. 